Robert Helms, General Manager with UL Power. We're here with a new engine that's going to be going in Zenith LSAs. But let's kind of start back at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about where this engine came from. Well, the engine is built in Belgium, and basically it's a consortium of three companies in Belgium. One is a metal company, the other is a, uh, an engine company that's been building race engines for years, and then the third is the technical group, the guys that designed the engine. The way the company started was about eight years ago, an ultralight helicopter manufacturer came to them with their engine, wanted them to improve their performance, and they weren't able to do it, but they were able to design a new engine for them from scratch, and that was our first engine, the 260i, and that was about eight years ago. The first engine shipped about six years ago. So what is, let's say, unique about this engine? What's nice about this engine is it's an all new design, but it's an aircraft engine. It's designed on purpose as an aircraft engine. It's direct drive, it's air cooled, four cylinder horizontally opposed. It's basically like the traditional aviation engines, the O200 or the Lycomings, but it's just built with CAD CAM technology. It's this new materials, it's lightweight materials. We're basically 30 horsepower more than the O200, but we're 80 pounds lighter. And that's through a combination of new technology plus the manufacturing capabilities and the materials. What fuel does it take? We have four different engines, but two are low compression, two are high compression. The low compression engines take 91 octane automotive gas, and the high compression are 93 octane. And any of them can use up to 15% ethanol or 100 low lead aviation gas. So this engine now is going to be installed in both of the Zenith aircraft models. How did Zenith come to you and make a decision to go with this engine? Well, Zenith was interested in offering another opportunity to their customers so that they had a choice of the full spectrum. And they had seen the engine previously and were interested in it. So about March of last year, I started working with Zenith. And they took this engine, which is currently our largest engine. It's 130 horsepower, and it's in the Zenith 650. And there's a firewall forward kit available for the 650 as well as the 750. And so they basically took the engine, developed the mount and the cowl. And then we have some optional kits that they use you know, to attach it to the airframe. The 130 horsepower engine today is about $22,000. The firewall forward kit's about $4,000. So for about $26,000, you get a nice 130 horsepower engine in either of the Zenith models. And then they're using our smaller engine. They're developing a firewall forward kit for the 701, the small Zenith. So what advantages then does that bring to the Zenith and other LSAs in which it might be installed? Well, what's nice about this engine is not only is it traditional aviation technology and air-cooled and direct drive, but it's got multi-port fuel injection. So there's four injectors and they're close to the cylinders and so less chance of vapor lock. So in the cockpit, there's no primer because the injectors are right at the cylinders. So it's easier to start it. Likewise, there's no choke and the engine has an ECU and the ECU is basically controlling the fuel air mixture and the ignition and there's various sensors on the engine. The sensors are sending the information to the ECU. The ECU takes that data it knows what fuel air mixture to send to the engine and when to ignite the spark. And so if you're low altitude, cold start, it knows to choke the engine. If you're high altitude, hot start, it knows to lean the engine. All the way through the parameter of flight, from startup to shutdown, the computer knows the most efficient you know, fuel air mixture and the ignition timing. So in the cockpit, all you have is the throttle. There's no mixture, no choke, no carburetor heat, no primer. So it's a much easier operation. So it's, it's a FADEC engine? Correct. And what does that do for the pilot of an LSA? FADEC basically is full authority digital engine control, and so it's exactly that. You get in the plane, you crack the throttle, you turn the key and you start it and let the engine warm up, push in the throttle and you go. And you want to land, you pull the throttle back. There's no choke, so ease of start, there's no primer. And then all through the perimeter of flight, you don't have to mess with the mixture. Or on landing, you don't have to worry about carburetor heat or in weather, so it's just the throttle. If you look at the panel of this airplane, the combination between the avionics and the lack of engine controls, it's a very clean, very simple panel, much easier less things to focus on inside the plane so you can keep your eyes outside and fly the plane. And basically decreasing cockpit workload. Oh yeah, substantially. When you're talking about flying an LSA and the pilots who might get into an LSA, does that really help lower the barrier in your opinion to people who might want to begin learning to fly an airplane in an LSA? Yeah, I think so. You know, if you ask a pilot today to think back on their, their flight training, it was different from plane to plane. There were some planes that carburetor heat played an important role in the operation, and they had to remember to put on, turn on the carburetor heat at a certain time in the flight. This, you don't have that. Mixture, same way. I know a lot of people when they were learning to fly, they were afraid to lean the engine, either you know keep it too rich and foul the plugs or lean it too much and kill the engine. I think it takes away some of the fear and makes it easier, yeah. Is this engine now fully certified? Currently, we're not pursuing FAA certification. It would just be a very cumbersome and expensive process. And we don't know that there's really a market for this engine in the certified area. And same way with the SLSA, 
to self-certify with the ASTM standard to go into SLSAs, it requires more work and a little bit more hardware. It would probably cost anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000 more per engine. And up till now, we haven't seen that big of a market for the SLSA, so we're really just focused on experimental right now. Robert Helms, General Manager with UL Power, thanks very much for joining us on Aero TV. You're welcome, thank you. Aero TV is brought to you by the DFC90 all digital attitude based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft, including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90.